you're flying anywhere in the country right now, chances are uh, that you're going to have to wait a long time. And it's not because of a weather problem. Uh, and that would be okay because you can't control the weather. But people here in D.C. can control sequestration. And that is why these automatic cuts uh, to air traffic controllers are making people have to sit across from the airport Roy Rogers and Cinnabons for, uh, on average, it sounds like at least an hour longer than they normally would. I'm joined by Congressman Robert Gibbs from Ohio. Congressman, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, now, let's just get right down to it. Do you think, you just heard there from the FAA administrator and the White House press secretary, do you think that the president is trying to uh, basically ride these delays out as long as he can for political gain? Oh, I think so. We're seeing reports this morning of some of the air traffic controllers coming out, kind of being whistleblowers, saying that, you know, management told them to make life as difficult as possible on the traveling public. You know, it's really unbelievable here. It's outrageous because this is not necessary. The FAA has uh, uh, their budgets grown from a little less than $5 billion to over $10 billion in the last uh, decade or so. Air travel is down about 3%. Uh, you know, look at an operation budget of nearly $10 billion and they can't cut 5% or so. And we see in the uh, other non-operational uh, personnel part of their budget, there's about $2.7 billion. There's $500 million going for consultants, $300 and some million going for travel and supplies, about $140 million going for uh, their own uh, fleet of aircraft. Uh, there's, there's, they, 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 can, they can make some cuts. So they had 18 months to, to work this out, and they just want to make pain as possible and put pressure on members of Congress like myself to, to go ahead and raise taxes. And at, at the time, they, he's risking public safety and also doing economic damage to our economy. And tell me a little bit about the uh, how is this a public safety risk, and, and what is the damage to the economy? Well, I think uh, when you're slowing down uh, the air flights, uh, the damage to the economy is, uh, you know, cost on delays, time, people missing flights, uh, uh, you know, it, it, there's economic damage there. And uh, possible safety measures where we have less uh, controllers on board, I know that they'll say, well, we're delaying the flights to, uh, to accom accommodate for the safety issue. But, you know, it, it's always a possibility and when it's not necessary to be done. I was really outraged uh, when I tr uh, traveled from Columbus, Ohio earlier this week to Washington, D.C. The gate uh, 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 person announced that, well, the plane's coming in a little late. We're going to be 40 minutes getting on the plane because of the, the furloughs of the air traffic controllers because of the sequester. And then when we got on the plane, they backed the plane off about 150 feet from the, the gate. And the uh, pilot came on and said, well, we've been sequestered. Uh, we have to wait until we get because uh, of the furloughs for the air traffic controllers. And, you know, if that's not playing a game, just like they, they, they canceled the tours at the White House, uh, it's not necessary. They're just trying to inflict harm on the American public and, and uh, the economy for political gain. But, Congressman, if, if I'm not mistaken, like 400 out of the 435 people in the House of Representatives have to take airplanes to and from their home districts. Isn't that kind of a push, uh, you know, it's, it's such a concentrated group of people uh, who are dramatically negatively impacted by these flight delays as a result of these furloughs. Uh, is that not pushing people to get these things taken care of or to postpone them or well, figure I, out I, the I, fix? I, well, I, I would argue that the administration has the flexibility. Like I said, there's uh, almost a billion dollars in cuts in the three areas that I mentioned. Uh, they could they could address that. They, they they're they're actually doing furloughs at the same uh, ratios as as at uh, airports like Chicago Hare as as airports out in uh, in the in a rural area that hardly has any flights. So uh, they got flexibility to make these cuts. You know, we made cuts here on our own budget here in our office budget here in the Congress. We're I'm operating on about 20 percent less dollars three three years ago than my predecessor. Uh, you know, when you got a 10 billion dollar our budget, operation budget, the FAA, and they can't find 5% after having nearly 10% annual increases uh, without uh, furlough and air traffic controllers and essential service. I think this is outrageous, and, and he's just trying, the White House is doing this for political gain and trying to get what he wants, and uh, you know, which is basically another tax increase. All right, so Congressman, my last question, uh, when does it end? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's been frustrating for me. I'm just starting my second term of Congress, and and uh, I just see all the bureaucracy, the red tape, and the gridlock, and, and it's really frustration. Frustration. It's challenging. Uh, I chair a subcommittee. I'm working on a, a maritime transportation bill, uh, which could be a bipartisan bill. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to, to make that work through. So there's some bipartisan efforts here, but uh, I think we need some cooperation from, from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue would, would be nice.
All right, well, Congressman Robert Gibbs, thank you again very much for your time this morning.